seriously and I've been let me hit the got it sign on zoom thank you Nadia <laughs> and um yeah I've been uh, working for over 20 years now and and uh started off uh working at um at uh office that hopefully most of you have heard of uh Dan Connolly uh in Vermont um uh, that was uh, quite a uh dream come true sort of uh, first job uh, out of school and then eventually uh, I made my way uh, across the other side of the uh, to the west coast uh, starting with uh, George uh, Hargraves, Hargraves Associates and then later on uh, Pete Walker and then uh, in my uh, chunk of time uh, at EDAW uh, which I can uh, explain uh, a little well, I, I'll explain it now. Uh, EDA, uh, EDAW, uh, unless you don't know the acronym, uh, ECBO, Dean Austin Williams. This is the firm that uh, Gary ECBO uh, uh, started uh, with fellow partners. Um, uh, Gary was uh, very much into the multidiscipline uh, practice, uh, working with engineers and planners. Uh, so that was a big firm uh, internationally. And um, so that I, I had a, a lot of. Uh, good times working there and, and developed uh, sort of my um, craft and, and design approach. I uh, learned a lot there. So uh, from there on, you know, I started working on projects uh, all more on my own and leading the process. So I'll get there and, and talk. So I'll, I'll, I'm going to have a few um, just kind of key highlight projects from uh, these past firms, offices I, I worked at, uh, but then I'll, 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 I'll get to uh, some of the more current projects uh, that we're working on right now uh, as of very, very current. So we'll get there quickly, I hope. Uh, I probably have too many slides, so I'm going to fly through these as quickly as I can. Uh, in case you don't know who Dan Conley is, I'll just kind of briefly mention and show some images here. You know, Dan is a, uh, a modernist uh, who's worked with some of the uh, most amazing architects, iconic architects, uh, uh, people like Eero Saarinen, uh, Ian Pei, Harry Cobb, uh, Harry Weiss, um, Richard Meyer, uh, to just name a few. Um, uh, pro architects that, <laughs> that that he worked with that I was part of uh, includes the Milwaukee uh, Art Museum with uh, Kyle Traub, uh, uh as well as um, well many many others. Uh, here's just kind of quick uh, images: Miller Garden on the top left, uh, 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 Jefferson Memorial in uh, St. Louis uh, to the right, uh, I.M. Pace uh, um, uh, JFK uh, Library on the on the niche. And um, and also uh, with Harry Cobb, the uh, Fountain Place in Dallas, uh, and that's Chicago Art Institute. So amazing uh, portfolio of work, uh, and so uh, just kind of uh, some shots of the studio that we were working in. Uh, uh, it was in Dan's um, uh, farmhouse uh, in the middle, well, edge of a forest. As you can see uh, it's just amazing views uh, into the maple forest that uh, surrounds the house, uh, the studio and model room, and of course that uh, dance office is at the top floor of the house. It's a fourth floor uh, house. There was a lot of uh, 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 stairmaster uh, uh, walking going on, uh, which is a great exercise. Dan loved it actually. Um, so anyway, um, that was my start and and um like i said it was just uh, amazing uh, to be there to just kind of see the projects uh, uh to just kind of witness uh, the master at work and and yeah we i, I think I, I got along quite well with him as well and i'm um, just going to show you briefly two projects um this is a, a big project unfortunately it never got uh executed uh but it was kind of the main project i was really kind of hired uh, on to, to help with uh, in Kyoto and Japan. Uh, MIT is a master's senior in industrial development, a big developer, and the uh, this is in the center is the Kyoto train station, but this uh, what turned out uh, later on today is <laughs> the shopping mall. But, uh, but originally there were some pretty uh, fantastic lofty plans uh, for a, a master plan that was uh, done by Pei Kopfried. This is Harry Kopf's uh, building, an uh, office building that's a big sweeping lines and there are uh, 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 
um, a large uh, series of different programs are happening, hotels, uh, um, uh, office buildings, uh, uh, performing arts center, KPF, Mary Bellini, uh, uh, Italian architects, and of course, Nick and Seke, uh, as the uh, record, architectural record. Um, so with all these different pieces, uh, the project was all about what is the landscape doing and, and how can it just kind of bring together all these different uses. So again, created this beautiful uh, kind of ground landscape uh, um, uh, rug that just kind of runs under everything that, that pulls all the buildings together. So as you can see, uh, this is just some uh, sample images. We did a lot of modeling uh, in the studio and that was a lot of fun. Um, and but what was fantastic was just you know, a lot of studying and, and analyzing uh, of different uh, uh, options and possibilities. This is one of the things that I did early on for Dan's uh, office uh, was also bringing some uh, computer use uh, to the office. Um, very simple uh, wire framing uh, to just kind of get a sense of the tree spacing. Uh, but the kind of drawings I, I did a lot, you know, did, I swear to God, probably a million of these for Dan was was to just kind of uh, sketch over them uh, and to create these uh, uh, quick perspective sketches just to kind of get a sense of uh, tree spacing, the spaces we're creating uh, and we're testing, you know, at, at different spacing and, and variations of all that. Um, so just uh, additional, so you can see uh, this would be Harry Cobb's building with this giant uh, columns that comes down uh, with elevator cords that go up to the building, but the garden pretty much flows uh, underneath all that. Another project I worked on uh, uh, quite a bit, uh, and, and uh, this is built, uh, is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> uh, Pittsburgh downtown, you can see the little courtyard right here. Uh, it's right next to where we're working, um, not so much working, but maybe just kind of collaborating, coordinating with uh, architect Michael Graves. Is, uh, his, he has a performing art center and an office building right next to our um, urban plaza. And it's a very simple, subtle, uh, very elegant plaza. It's, uh, it's all uh, four by four inch uh, granite cobbles on the ground plane um, with uh, pollarded. Uh, uh, um, lindens uh, that flanks the space and also creates the backdrop. Um, we're also working with uh, the artist Louise Bourgeois. Um, and this is her the period where you know she's still doing these massive uh, uh, bronze uh, sculptures, very organic form. Uh, so for this, this is kind of there's water uh, that trickles down and down to a very subtle kind of a fountain. Uh, piece on the ground plane. So this is another kind of a graphic technique we, we did a lot uh, back then. Uh, again, uh, uh, as you can imagine, maybe you saw in my shop for the studio, uh, everything by hand, uh, hand drawings, uh, ink on mylar. Uh, and so these were on uh, a sepia a blueprint and it was just kind of throw a little color on it. So um, it was very effective at the time. So you can see I was doing, um, some uh, basic uh, wireframe modeling again and drawing over top to get a sense of the space and the scale and then some views from the front. So I finally got a chance to visit uh, in 2017 and this is uh, what it looks like today. Um, still holding up quite nicely, uh, very um, subtle, uh, but a very beautiful and elegant plaza up right on the street corner. And, Eyeballs. Sorry, I just can't ever quite understand the eyeball theme. <laughs> and then um, eventually I, I moved out west uh, to California and I uh, started working for at the Harvest Associates. And uh, this is one of my first projects that I worked on. Um, it's, it's an old project, uh, Guadalupe River Park, GRP. Uh, has been in the office for probably almost 10 years by that point. And uh, uh, that point meaning that this is 1999. And, and what I worked on was the very last phase uh, of that uh, river park. Uh, Guadalupe River, I'll, I should just kind of mention very quickly, uh, 
uh, used to uh, flood all the time. It would flood downtown San Jose. So this park, this whole project was critical in terms of how to control uh, or manage uh, the stormwater uh, flow uh, in this area uh, to manage the, the flooding effect uh, for the downtown. Um, one of the early uh, design concepts from the Army Corps engineers was just channel it like an LA river. Uh, but George and his associate uh, in their wisdom pushed for the idea of using a more of a landscape approach. Uh, so that was what was fantastic about the project. And this, uh, I'm showing the screen because uh, this was my first uh, uh, um, uh, uh, case in uh, uh, CAD, uh, as I mentioned before, you know, before at uh, uh, Dan's office, I never, uh, everything was uh, by hand. So, uh, so I had to learn uh, on the job, learn it quickly. And this was the uh, uh, final uh, product. Um, by this point of the project, uh, there's zero budget left. Um, as uh, if you ever, go to San Jose and see this project site, if you see the er earlier older phases, uh, it started with uh, stone. It, it was a quartz site uh, that was used for all these uh, meandering uh, retaining walls. Uh, but unfortunately, we did not have money for that. So it's just all simple concrete form, which I thought was quite nice, actually. It really kind of goes with the grungy um, look. It's, it's, I have to also say it's probably one of the first under freeway type projects uh, that, that I'm aware of uh, long before all the other uh, under freeway type of projects you see nowadays is so popular. Um, but this this was done a long time ago. And it's under a multiple uh, kind of interchange. And then just kind of uh, the, the between walls and stepping down, uh, down to the river. The walkways all kind of dip down and go under uh, roadways and then comes back up. So there's a lot of uh, uh, intricate grading uh, design ideas involved. Another project in San Francisco, this is um, uh, the West Bluff uh, of Chrissy Fields. Uh, so it's right at the, at the base of the Golden Gate uh, Bridge. Um, one of the interesting or you know, kind of learning experience for myself is I was working with the kind of uh, uh, the construction drawing uh, team and and um, the story goes is that the survey was off by 20 feet <laughs> and 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 uh, trucks and bulldozers were on site and we had to figure out a solution like we had probably about 48 hours uh, to come up with a new plan to figure out how to salvage the design and, and work with the existing site uh, so it was uh, was uh, pretty nerve wracking. Um, but this berm that divides the parking lot from the park uh, originally uh, were uh, two uh, parallel series of berms that, that the walkway was exact in between. So unfortunately we had to uh, turn it into just one big berm and that's and, and to and then salvage the rest of the side as it is on the other side. But it's, it's a very uh, lovely space. Uh, the, the firms really do a fantastic uh, job of uh, uh, mitigating uh, the winds. It's a very, very windy site here uh, um, in Chrissy Fields. It's a northwest Brazil, prevailing wind coming from the bridge. And, um, and so this firm, and, and as you can see, this, uh, this nice uh, slope walkway, not a ramp, slope walkway at 5%, so therefore we don't have handrails. Uh, and, and the uh, seat walls uh, on the other side really create a nice uh, a protected uh, space. I'm just going to fly through these images and keep this going. Uh, after Pete, I moved out to uh, East Bay and and uh, to the joint Pete's office uh, in Berkeley. And one of the first projects I got to work on uh, was this. Uh, uh, it's a small, small project, but right in the middle of this fantastic <laughs> um, uh, site. Uh, I'm just going to stay on this a little while. Uh, many of Pete's uh, 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 famous uh, projects are all located here in uh, uh, the South Coast. Uh, South Coast uh, 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 shopping malls to the west here in Costa Mesa and to the north, uh, uh, Pete's uh, Parterre uh, Gardens 
the concentric brain driveway, um, the stainless steel building of Caesar Pauli that comes down at the base is where you'll find a pizza concentric ring uh, water fountain that becomes the plaza. Uh, that's all located here. Uh, also, not Peace Project, but to the to, just a block to announce this uh, Isamu Noguchi's uh, California scenario, uh, which is located right here. So it's just amazing to uh, uh, walking distance from all each other. Um, but the repertory theater that I've worked on is right here in this small little site in the middle. Oh, here are some images. Uh, uh, the Gucci's uh, California scenario, the, the, the fountain, and a few other projects. But the the project I worked on here is is, uh, is basically an extension of the, the lobby uh, of uh, the, the theater itself. And we created this patio um, with this uh, very unique, and I, I don't think it has, it's been ever used <laughs> again since this kind of hard point pattern. Um, no stripes, to, um, but it's, it's a beautiful, uh, the constructed, this was probably finished around 2004, and I did not get a chance to go out and see the final until uh, about 2014. So this is 10 years after uh, construction. And so uh, um, professional performers can tell it's immaculate, it's well-maintained, and it's clearly the construction is not much. Um, the color concrete held up really well. Um, and, you know, we, we worked on this uh, um, very diligently. Also, there's a lot of uh, uh, subterranean uh, utility uh, complications that we had to deal with. But the amazing thing is, you know, when the job is well coordinated and well designed, you don't see any of that. You know, there's so much going on underground, you just don't see. Uh, but that's what makes a successful project. Uh, and then sitting beneath a, a series of crepe myrtles in a, a circular uh, tree graves on this interesting particle uh, pattern. Uh, and then just another one quickly of uh, Pete's um, uh, projects. Uh, of course, working on Pete, I got to work on a lot of international uh, projects all over the world, uh, quite frankly. Uh, but none more than uh, more interesting than this one uh, in Auckland. Uh, got to go there uh, uh, to visit the site and, and work with client and the team as well on this. Uh, it's a, it was originally a beautiful, um, pristine uh, uh, farm farming site, I think cattle farm, uh, and and it was going to become a um, what you see now, <laughs> a business park, um, and and might you might think is. Uh, tragedy uh, in the way that um, it's, it's, uh, the project itself for us is uh, quite interesting because um, uh, to, to uh, Auckland's uh, um, wisdom, uh, much of the uh, stormwater, and, and mind you, this is early 2000s, so this is very forward thinking. Uh, the fact that all stormwater runoff uh, from the project site has been treated before it, it moved on to, into the sea. Um, so what we were tasked to do is actually figure out how that's going to happen, and we uh, and we decided that we would create this um, beautiful uh, waterfront uh, kind of park uh, and to to handle uh, all the uh, runoff and treatment of it, which basically means a series of um, uh, a series of uh, wetlands uh, that 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 gets uh, uh, move on to, from one pond to the next and eventually uh, it spills out. Um, and, and we created this very unique kind of a um, series of um, uh, hedgerows uh, that they all uh, actually point towards a particular uh, uh, Mount Wellington. Uh, if you know uh, of my geography, uh, Mount Wellington is a uh, uh, very noticeable uh, landform in the middle of the city. Uh, so it helps to kind of give the project some context as well uh, to see uh, how it's related to, to uh, this area. And this is a fantastic image of one of those hedgerows that you can see now. Uh, so I work with a good friend of mine, uh, James Lord, who's gone on to create his own firm, a successful firm of uh, service design in San Francisco. And he's, 
and, and these are his uh, photos uh, after it was all done. And then um, two big projects that I want to talk about. This is uh, around the time when you know, I left Pete, I moved on to uh, join EDAL uh, uh, to kind of take a more senior role, um, managing projects, managing uh, designs of projects. And, and, and I, while I was there, I just kind of happened to land on a series of hospital projects, uh, which is actually quite interesting and very complicated in itself. Uh, a lot to do with uh, circulation uh, access, uh, very important uh, aspects about uh, planning and site. Um, and one of those projects I'm showing here is uh, the um, Alter Bates uh, Hospital in Oakland. Um, what is happening here is that this is uh, what's known in, <laughs> to locals as the Pill Hill. Uh, it's, 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 it's all a series of medical office buildings on San Tava Hill. And, and um, at the very top, uh, in fact, uh, 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 the planning goes is that they, they need a new uh, patient tower and that's what this new building is. Uh, and then there's a, a series of other uh, renovations going on with the, the medical office buildings. They also created a brand new, uh, large, large uh, parking garage to surface the site. Um, so out of all this uh, activity, uh, they really needed a, a landscape plan to kind of make sure everything's working together and tied together. So, um, of course, you know, kind of we dived in where we have all kinds of uh, diagrams and ideas to talk about how we make these connections, uh, how do we prioritize what's more important and, and what is going to make this place unique. Uh, you can see the circulation diagrams here. We mapped out everything in terms of you know, how to emergency uh, vehicles access the site, how to uh, uh, visitors uh, access the site, and, and staff. Uh, very important. These are all very different users uh, on a hospital site. But what was important to us is 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 more about uh, kind of the land planning for the landscape areas. And, and what we tried to create was, and, and we're trying to reiterate to client over and over that, that we needed this, we need a heart of the campus, we need to create some kind of a, a campus feeling because it is a very urban site, it's, it's been kind of disparate piece of, uh, of, a list of a campus for a long time. So we create this plan um, in order to um, uh, also uh, you know, captivate the, the energy and the excitement of the new building, the new tower. Uh, we thought, you know, this was the best spot to, to really create and push for this uh, new plaza, uh, whatever you like to call it. You know, some people want to call it a park, but it's not really a park, it's not really a plaza, it's something in between. Um, but it's definitely a, a destination uh, for people to be. Um, uh, for a long time, also we were uh, pushing for you know for doing this, um, but even though at the same time uh, the client was reluctant, and we had to carry two options for for a long, long time. Uh, the other option was uh, a surface parking lot for doctors. It was uh, meant to be the doctor's lot. <laughs> So it's a good thing that the, uh, it turns out that the docs would uh, prefer parking their cars in the garage anyway, so nice shaded garage. Um, and so we thought, uh, okay, uh, that's great. And, and we went ahead and was able to create this uh, really cool space. Uh, there's some uh, grading involved in terms of uh, this ramp that, that uh, comes up to, to meet at the uh, mid-block mid crossing. Uh, and that was, quite the feat in the South actually pushing for that mid uh street crossing. Um, but we were able to create these kind of a nice uh, large amphitheater seating uh, and to create this kind of a social uh, moment uh, out of all this. And, and today is a, is a really great um, successful site. Uh, I see, uh, uh, since I've been back, you know, every time I'm out there, I see people uh, enjoying the space, using it for you know, um, place for lunch or a meeting place. Um, I can't imagine uh, since the pandemic, uh, the, the, uh, I wonder how, you know, people have been using this space. I, I hope it's been uh, a benefit, a refuge uh, for, 
for the staff and for patients uh, to be able to use the space that purchase uh, the cost in the hospital. So as you can see, uh, some of these images are taken on later. Uh, the landscape, the planting has grown in, the Mexican fan grass has, has grown in, and Arthostaphilus uh, ground cover is, is just uh, slowly coming in. Uh, and, and we have the redwoods uh, uh, that are still uh, kind of infancy at, at this stage. Um, but this is, uh, this is important. I, I don't have all the slides to kind of talk about the complete project, but uh, uh, the, you know, the idea of using this light standard, uh, the, the color palette, the, the, the rows of uh, redwood, this, is, this sets up a kind of a, a language about this uh, past system that continues at different parts of the site. And, and that was very important for us. Uh, to, to create something uh, that will be consistent in other parts of the campus to, uh, again, to just kind of try to create that campus feel. Uh, so this is kind of an elevation feed from across the street. And also, uh, what's also involved here is uh, this, uh, this is a large uh, stormwater uh, retention uh, area uh, north of the garage. Um, it, uh, it treats the water runoff for uh, uh, the entire garage building actually uh, and, and others. And so the, we're able to uh, coordinate with the engineers and, uh, to integrate all of these uh, elements as well. Okay. All right, so moving on, uh, sorry, clicking too fast here. Uh, I'll, I'll just kind of quickly uh, uh, summarize this <laughs> as the uh, LPCH Lucille Piper Children Hospital at the uh, Stanford University campus. Uh, we were tasked to uh, work on the uh, landscape areas uh, that would be basically extension of the existing uh, uh, children's hospital, which is uh, this building over here. Uh, what was unique about this building is just these beautiful uh, interior courtyards and terracing uh, that the architects uh, want to continue and expand on in the new uh, building. This is working with Perkins and Will in New York as the design architects. And um, for us, uh, of course, it was a wonderful project, a dream client really, uh, that uh, really had the uh, landscape uh, and sustainability uh, in mind. Um, this project went on to become uh, the platinum, uh, only I believe second, <sighs> Uh, the Platinum Hospital uh, project in the U.S. Um, one day, uh, our big idea here and uh, was to uh, look at how we can integrate physically, literally bringing nature into the building and out. Uh, that, that was clear what this diagram was about. And we, you know, explore, of course, uh, um, diagrams and hand sketches in different uh, sorts of ways. But what we came up uh, towards the end was, was really uh, to look at kind of as the big idea that how the nature and this for us was looking at the building as a tree and how this, uh, how is that, you know, um, um, metaphor uh, continue throughout the building. Uh, uh, it, it turns out that the, the interior designers that really love the idea as well. So the, the building itself, uh, different levels uh, represented mm -hmm. different strata so of a, a typical tree from trunk to foliage. And then on the ground plane for us, for the landscape idea was all about how, you know, how do we bring these uh, stone walls in and out of the building that appears as if they're the roots of a tree or the Advocating and reaching out and film is, and the and this is um, towards the end. The, the proposed plan uh, was to see how you know some of these elements where you can see these uh, stone walls that the the wrap out the building and they separate, they bifurcate, and they just kind of die into the land uh, form itself. To create this uh, different spaces. So here's some uh, couple of site photos seeing how that worked. Uh, we also create these different pockets where it will plant inside them. And then, and then once you come inside the, 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 the lobby is spectacular uh, with this uh, uh, glass wall that, that you see, how you see onto the, the, the landscape space. 
and, and meanwhile, you can see in this image how the, the stonewall just kind of wraps it and then uh, from the interior goes out into the exterior. It becomes part of the entity. So in the San you know, we had uh, lots of great ideas. There are uh, events, a program for it, uh, um, outdoor uh, theater, movies, movie night, all that. So all that fun stuff, uh, uh, the patients, the kids and staff can all uh, participate. We also create a, a path that can get you up to this level so that you can, you know, for, for kids who are in, uh, uh, their patient beds or wheelchair, they can all kind of climb up to this kind of higher level to be able to look back towards the building where they can set up uh, events and things to look at. So that's from reality back to our initial uh, uh, proposed uh, idea. Uh, it was uh, pretty close uh, to that. Um, just a few more images of that amphitheater space. And then additionally, on top of that, we also had this uh, a roof garden uh, called the um, Discovery Garden, uh, was focused on um, the patients and, and the kids. Uh, there were lots of uh, a team of consultants in terms of uh, uh, working on this and, and bringing this kind of playful uh, sculpture uh, pieces uh, into the design as well. Okay, that's my halfway mark, Nadia. <laughs> I'm there, I'm there. Um, anyway, so uh, I, I hope those projects give you an idea of where I came from very quickly and to where I am presently, uh, you know, uh, I guess I can say like a, um, uh, with the, the combination of my experience and working through these uh, uh, different firms or projects, learning from my colleagues, you know, what I think uh, we all talk about a lot and we talk about often here uh, in this studio is that, you know, how do we take our projects to the next level? You know, how, uh, of course, we, we know of all the things that we have to do, uh, especially in Toronto. We have a TGS, we have LEED, we have, uh, sustainability, uh, climate um, change, uh, uh, and safety concerns. There's lots and lots of issues that we've always had to contend with as landscape architects. Um, but what's I think uh, also very important for us is to be able to have a story to tell for each project. Uh, what What is the story behind each project, each project site? Uh, whether it's history, whether it's the context, uh, something that uh, that makes the project special uh, is what we're always uh, talking about here. We're, we, we want to um, highlight that, bring that forward because that's what's gonna really uh, make it special. So that's the kind of thing we think about a lot and we, we want to concentrate on uh, uh, for our work. So um, without further ado, so let me just kind of jump into a few projects uh, right now that that's ongoing. Uh, this is a, a project in Topico uh, for a, um, a condo project, which of course there are many uh, in Toronto as we all know. Um, but this is an interesting one where we're, we're dealing with an existing site, existing uh, a building, uh, that's the one right in the middle. Uh, and there's a development uh, being proposed that, that there will be an additional building uh, to the east and to the north. Uh, uh, this surface parking lot, which actually is not a parking lot, there, there, there is a one-story uh, uh, underground parking will be all uh, ripped out and, and then uh, an additional building will be coming in. So we're looking at a site and analyzing. It. We found that you know what's interesting, uh, unique about this is that it's, it's creating uh, a very uh, lovely, intimate uh, kind of interior uh, courtyard that that is also mirrored uh, to the east, where we're going to have our um, amenity space as part of the project. But meanwhile, at the same time, there seems to be this, uh, at least on the ground plan, 
seems to be a visual connection and that, that we have uh, today uh, with the existing building where on the ground floor uh, is actually cleared. Uh, there's just, it's just come down as columns, but you can see through uh, on, on the ground uh, plane. Um, so all of these ideas, you know, we, we kind of talked about how um, we sort of adopted as kind of the landscape porosity. How do we uh, highlight this porosity uh, through different materials and and, and ideas, and, and also using uh, existing uh, elements such as the column spacing, and, and make that as part of make make the existing elements as part of our proposed landscape so that it's integrating uh, what's there, but, but what's also uh, is coming in, in proposed. And so we you know through a series of the analysis and diagrams here, we, we identified this kind of priority zone, we call it, and, and we want to highlight uh, uh, these elements where we propose uh, ideas of a landscape that um, that literally runs through uh, down ground floor, the ground plane, and 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 through the existing building into the proposed building as well. And how do we um, you know connect the landscapes uh, by creating the multi the, the element? Uh, we start with these kind of oval planters that become uh, these uh, different spaces throughout the project as well. So there's a commonality, there's a consistency uh, throughout. So uh, surrounding the existing uh, building, we're you know, proposing uh, this new path that, that brings additional uh, amenity to the existing uh, residents as well as future residents. And so finally, this is the overall plan uh, looking at the whole site. You know, it does seem to be this uh, interesting play of what's um, more urban side uh, in terms of the existing uh, uh, courtyard uh, as well as uh, the post uh, park light setting uh, that's around the existing uh, um, areas to the south and to the west. And north. Another project that we're very proud of and that's uh, uh, coming along uh, is a project site that's uh, down at uh, Peter and Richmond. Um, this is uh, a site that has three heritage buildings that will be uh, preserved. Um, so the idea is, you know, how do we approach that? What is the landscape? Uh, what can we do? Um, we are looking at um, uh, is 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 middle of the uh, fashion district. Um, and there's an interesting history behind all of that as well. Uh, um, but we want to challenge the idea of um, heritage and, and, and what, what does that really mean uh, when we preserve buildings and, and, and what does that do for the landscape? And is it um, also a legitimate idea of um, is the landscape uh, 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 heritage enough or, or can we propose um, uh, this um, sense of heritage uh, to the site. So what we proposed was essentially to kind of flip the idea that there are the existing buildings, but the, the landscape areas in between, we want to uh, introduce um, uh, more of a heritage element and, and to be kind of consistent with the uh, building that surrounds them. So that's how uh, we're, you know, justify uh, looking at uh, bringing um, uh, elements that are kind of uh, uh, pieces of uh, different uh, heritage uh, materials, uh, old brick uh, um, and, and uh, the more uh, rustic uh, steel, like the uh, Corten uh, steel planters uh, and materials to be used on the site. And then we're also wanting to make sure in, in that there, there's no, there's continuity from a ground plane. Uh, and it's, a, it's a vertical uh, concept of bringing this uh, ground plane up uh, to the different floors and that uh, the, the amenity uh, roof areas uh, will get that sense of um, heritageness, if you can call it that. 
And then on this particular uh, roof, we have a pretty large area. So we want to propose uh, these kind of uh, uh, large uh, lawn mounds of an uh, amphitheater kind of type seating and make it really kind of a social family uh, space as well. And then as you can see, this material kind of just uh, continues on up to three different floors um, and into potentially a pool, which um, unfortunately I don't think is going to happen. <laughs> but um, that was a great idea at the time. Um, is and this is a fantastic uh, little, um, uh, not little, uh, but a fantastic rendering uh, uh, by uh, Quadrangle. Uh, it's an elevation view uh, from Peter Street. And seeing how the building itself is an um, interesting engineering uh, feat uh, of uh, rising up in and around uh, the, uh, the existing um, heritage buildings. And meanwhile, we're creating uh, this uh, uh, sense sense of uh, texture um, of the city around. And then this is on from the looking in from the Richmond side. We also uh, uh, are working with a pop site uh, with the city. Um, uh, publicly uh, uh, um, accessible site. And, and you can see the, the uh, terracing uh, activities up on, on the amenity views uh, over here as well. Another project we're working on uh, is at the Florence Pagina. Uh, it's a, a fantastic and, and important, important site. We're right next to the Spadina uh, uh, subway station, as you can see up top. And, and you know, we asked ourselves, like, uh, how do we um, look at this site? How do we address it? It's such importance, but it's, it's very like the previous, like the Peter Street site. They're very small and limited areas. Uh, so what kind of interest uh, we can bring into to, to make this uh, somehow special and different. Um, and we, you know, look at uh, another option of, you know, how do we uh, use, uh, play with this light and, and, and and highlight the uh, facades and, and make it part of the landscape. But in the end, we uh, landed on this idea of creating a, what I call a landscape ribbon, uh, that ribbon that basically uh, wraps around um, the, the landscape, but appears as if it's also wrapping the building because it's working in uh, concert with the structural uh, aspects. And I can show you the elevation in a second and how that idea kind of continues up uh, onto the different floors. So again, we wanted to bring this concept up through the different uh, uh, roof gardens, the roof uh, terraces. And then uh, as you can see, it, there's a relationship uh, between uh, different uh, roof gardens uh, all the way down to the ground plane. So here's another uh, uh, really lovely um, uh, rendering of the building and, and, and Although these uh, columns and structures are not green, <laughs> I wish they were, um, but uh, there is a, a language a relationship between uh, these um, zigzagging lines that you will see if you're on uh, closer to the building that you will see is expressed in, in the landscape uh, paving and planters uh, that wraps around the building. You can see the little uh, roof terrace and trees as well. So this is a view uh, from Spadina, looking north. As you can see, this uh, the, the street corner entrance, uh, but you can see the, the building rising right on axis in the center of Spadina. There is a proposed uh, roof terrace up here. Uh, that is uh, part of our uh, landscape design as well. So those are um, uh, just a few of our uh, current projects. Um, but uh, this is a, a kind of a bonus. This is my Steve Jobs and then <laughs> moment of, uh, and then one more thing. Um, there has been this exciting kind of a, a, a renewal of appreciation for modernism, I think that's been happening. And, and whether these sites are just too important to ignore or they're just, uh, so beautiful that, that we have to remember and, and, and look at how we can preserve. 
again, the idea of preservation is an interesting one. I'll get into it a little bit more. So just two weeks ago, Walter Hood was uh, on this lecture series, and, and uh, Walter was talking about his project, Oakland Museum uh, uh, of Art. There's a lot of renovation going on there. Um, Michael Van Valkenburg has uh, recently completed uh, this renovation of the Jesperson Memorial as well because of, I believe, the new uh, visitation visitor uh, tender that was created at the, the base of the uh, the mod, base of the uh, arch, and then uh, and then in turn the the, the landscape in the park was all completely redone. Uh, I am sure that uh, Dan will be very happy about that. I don't know if uh, um, uh, any of you probably don't know, uh, that it was originally planted, uh, or originally proposed uh, to have London plane trees uh, in the park beneath the arch. The plane tree would have that a strong vertical leader that would kind of give you that kind of stature that's, you know, um, that would be somewhat uh, um, reminiscent of the, uh, the, the, the arch itself. But unfortunately, it was planted with ash. Uh, trees, which is a completely uh, different tree, the wrong tree for <laughs> the site. And I still remember, and I was kind of reminiscing with an old colleague of mine the other day that uh, Dan just never got over that. He was very, very incensed about how uh, the, the, the client that the city had uh, changed uh, his tree selection to ash. Uh, so thank goodness uh, Michael has corrected that. Uh, that, that atrocity, and, and so London plane trees are in, uh, and the park is complete. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, on picture, based on pictures, I, I would love to go there myself to see. Um, but uh, just FYI, that's uh, completely redone. And what's also redone recently is the Ford Foundation uh, atrium with uh, also architect Kevin Roach. Uh, by the way, Kevin Roach was the architect of the Oakland Museum. Um, uh, this is in on 42nd Street in New York. Uh, Ford Foundation, uh, the building is actually publicly accessible as well. Um, and, and this entire garden, the atrium, the interior garden was uh, recently replanted, redone uh, with a Nancy Brooke, uh, uh, um, based in Miami, I want to say. So recently I, I, I've, I've um, had the chance to get connected with uh, a nonprofit group called Friends of Cali Garden. And they have been uh, trying to raise money and raise attention uh, to um, attention to uh, uh, Dan's uh, project in Tampa, Florida. Tampa, this garden, um, what can I say? It was, uh, yeah. I would consider my, myself, I would consider Dan's one of Dan's uh, masterpieces uh, besides, you know, well, a few others, the garden, JFK, so on and so forth. Um, but located in downtown uh, Tampa, uh, the building is by um, architect Harry Cobb, and, and and we're right in downtown. And and I, uh, after speaking with some locals, I mean, Tampa is one of your typical uh, North American city that's suffered from urban sprawl. Uh, so downtown have uh, suffered a lot, but there hasn't been uh, very much development in uh, many decades until uh, recently. Um, so there is a momentum, there is interest in looking at downtown developments are coming in. So there's definitely interest in uh, 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 resurrecting and, and, and restoring uh, the Kylie Garden. Uh, the Kylie Garden was, um, uh, you know, as you can see in these images, it was complete in 1988 in the late 80s. And and once it was complete, it was handed over to the city for uh, its kind of maintenance. And, and unfortunately, that was uh, when uh, things kind of gone downhill. It was never properly maintained. The city never really had the uh, resources to maintain a garden like this. Uh, there's a water feature uh, that's intricate and complicated. Um, and that, uh, and so it, it fell on the wayside. And, and uh, by the time, um, I believe 2008, 2009, um, uh, there, there was a, a leak in the uh, parking garage that's beneath it. The entire garden's on structure, by the way, is on the parking garage. Uh, so they had to rip everything up. So the trees uh, were gone. Uh, uh, the, the landscape, the, the paved 
thing that the uh, elements were all um, tagged and, and moved offsite and, and then uh, moved back in. Um, uh, so as you can see, these, these were uh, some of the images uh, I got from uh, Harry, uh, Harry Wolf, the architect on the, on the project. And, and so sadly, this is the state of things today. Um, the, the, uh, the benches, the papers have uh, been um, put back on site, uh, but with no trace. And it's been this way since um, since uh, 2009, I believe. And um, yeah, so we've been working with the, the, the local group in, in, in seeing how we can uh, help. Um, and one of the things uh, that came up uh, was that uh, there are uh, organizations and other groups in the city that did not want the trees to come back, um, namely uh, this uh, um, uh, music uh, festival, and because uh, they need the space <laughs> uh, uh, for for other things, uh, uh, beverage tent is what we ended up calling that, and uh, second stage, second stage. Uh, stage and, and so you can, as you can see these elements are kind of scattered all over the place so we came in and we thought okay we can do a much better job at this we reorganized it we've uh, placed these elements in uh, different quadrants of the of the site and and then so that we essentially try to clear space where we can do some uh, uh, serious uh, planting and to bring back the crate minerals that, that used to be here. So this is our uh, proposed plan. Uh, and uh, again, kind of leaving some areas open for future event spaces um, and, and such. So this was our um, uh, currently a proposed plan right now uh, that we produce uh, for the group. Uh, uh, so you know, this is the plan that's being used to kind of present to other interest groups, uh, to other um, um, uh, parties to, to, to solicit uh, kind of donations and, and, and additional help to, to uh, kind of forward the uh, process. Uh, we created these uh, additional images of, you know, we were at the, we went to the music festival uh, last year and took some of these shots and we uh, saw how the space was used and clearly it was not 100% used and we can uh, certainly bring the trees back and, and have to the garden and the event uh, to, to, to those were the images uh, that we produced. So recently, and, and maybe some of you have probably seen on my social <laughs> posts uh, that uh, I was down in Tampa, um, the, the group have brought uh, um, TCO Labs, a uh, beautiful exhibit of Dan's work to Tampa. And the grand and the opening uh, was last Friday. So we were down there, uh, myself and some colleagues from our Orlando office uh, were in Tampa to present these drawings and points to the group. So we'll see what's next with our lab. All right, that's enough of me. <laughs>